Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to install Pi-hole, a network-wide ad blocker. The advantages of this are that you don't need to install an ad blocker on every device manually. Pi-hole also blocks in-app ads. With this, you don't need to deal with the 10 second ads every time you die in a game. One downside with this method though is that Pi-hole does not block YouTube ads, but wait until the end of the video where I show you some workarounds. Step 1. The Operating System Now as the project name suggests, this is made for the Raspberry Pi. For those who don't know, the Raspberry Pi is a single board computer which is perfect for small projects and only costs $40. But if you don't have a Raspberry Pi, this can also be installed on any compatible OS. If you have a computer you want to install this on, I recommend Ubuntu Server. I'll have a link down below. It's a free installation. After the OS installation, the steps will be the same. I will not cover how to install Ubuntu Server in this video. Step 2. Raspberry Pi OS Lite For the Raspberry Pi, I will be using Raspberry Pi OS Lite. The Lite version only includes a command line interface with no graphical user interface. This will be fine for us since we will be using it as a headless server and we will just SSH into the Raspberry Pi. So, the first step is to install it from the raspberrypi.org website. I'll have a link for this down below. If you scroll down, you'll see three download links. The first one is the normal desktop OS with the recommended software, and the second one is the normal desktop. We won't be using either of those. We want this last one, Raspberry Pi OS Lite. Just click download here, and save it on the desktop or wherever you can access it. And just wait for that to download. Once that's done downloading, go ahead and open Rufus. So Rufus is a USB and SD card flashing tool. I prefer to use Rufus to flash USB and SD cards, but Belena Etcher also works. It's another tool to flash USB drives. I'll have a download link for both of them down below and once you open Rufus you just click select over here and select the download zip file and click open. Once that's done just click start and once this little pop up comes up click OK. This may take around two minutes. And once it's done writing, go ahead and click close in the corner here. Now the next step will be to open File Explorer and click on the boot sector. It should show up here as a drive. It should be around 250 megabytes. Click on that and once you're here, you should see all these files. Just right click on any empty space and then click new and then text document. Here at the bottom, name this file SSH, and you can remove this file extension since we don't need that. Then click Enter. Here there will be a pop-up, just click Next. And that should be it. Now we're ready to boot the Raspberry Pi. Once the SD card is flashed, you can take your Raspberry Pi flip it over and insert the micro SD card. After that, plug in the Ethernet cable, the HDMI cable, and a USB keyboard. The HDMI and USB keyboard are only for initial setup and you can unplug them later once we SSH into the Raspberry Pi. To finish, plug in the micro USB connector and power it on. After a few minutes of booting the Raspberry Pi, you should get to a screen where it says Raspberry Pi Login. The default username is Pi, P-I, all lowercase. After that, click Enter and wait for a password box to come up. Once that pops up, enter Raspberry, all lowercase. Those both are the default username and password for the Raspberry Pi. 
and after waiting a few seconds you should get to a green command line. Once you get there, enter IP address. After that, you'll see three things come up, L-O-E-T-H-0 and then WLAN0. You want to pick ETH0 because that's the one that corresponds to Ethernet. There beside INET, you should find your IP address. Take note of that because we'll need that later. So now once you're back here in Windows, the first thing to do is open a terminal. You can open command prompt, uh, PowerShell, it doesn't really matter. So the first thing to do is enter ssh pi, which is a username, at your IP address. Yours will likely be different, and once you're done with that, click enter. Here you'll be sure, are you, it'll ask you, are you sure you want to continue connecting? Just type yes and click enter. And now it will ask for your password. And you should just enter the same default password in Raspberry. And after that, you should get this little green bar here. And that means you've logged in successfully. Now the next step is to install the PyHole application. Now to do that, you'll find a command on their website. If you scroll down here to number two, install PyHole, you can click here. And there's a one line command here that you can just copy and paste into the terminal and just click enter. This may take a few seconds. Okay, once you get through that, you'll get to this blue screen where it says PyHole Automated Installer at the top, and it says this installer will transform your device into a network-wide ad blocker. Just click Enter for OK, and click Enter again. Now you can just keep clicking Enter until you get to this part, Upstream DNS Provider. Now I recommend just using Google, but I prefer Cloudflare. After that, this is the ad blocker list. This is the default one. Just click enter and uh, make sure both of these have a star beside them and click enter. And it says, do you want to use your current network settings as static address? Just click enter for yes. And it's a good thing to take note of this IP address because you will need this later. So just copy that and click enter again. And it says, do you want to install the web admin interface? Just click yes and yes again and this is optional but i would rather keep it on and show everything there's multiple options here i would just show everything and once you're done with that it will just complete the installation Okay, once you get to this installation complete screen, you can see view the web interface at this place. So you can just copy this website and view it here. And if you get to this dashboard, that means everything has been set up correctly. Now, you may have noticed it says your admin login password is this random thing. I recommend you change that, so click enter, and once you click enter, you can enter this command, sudo pyhole-a-p, and then your password. And once it says new password set, you're ready to go. So again, open a new tab and go to the IP address. 
slash admin. And over here on the side, you'll find this login tab. Click that and the password you just set, which was password. And if you see all these tabs on the side, that means you've successfully logged in. And right now, we just need to change the DNS in our router and we're ready to go. The first thing you need to do is find the IPv6 address of your Raspberry Pi. Now, if you did take note of it before, you, don't, you can skip this step. But if you didn't, you can go find it in your router settings. So I have a Google Wi-Fi, meaning I can do it through the Google Wi-Fi app. So I can click Devices and find my Raspberry Pi on the network and then copy the IPv6 address. The IPv4 address is the same thing we use to log into the admin interface, so we don't need to be copying that. It's usually the longer address, which is the one you need to copy. After that, go to a network in general. Your settings might be different. Look for something like advanced and DNS. And click custom. There, paste the IPv6 address and for the primary one, enter the same one you used to log into the admin interface. And once that's done, you should have less ads on all websites. As I mentioned before, Pi-hole does not block YouTube ads. The reason for this is that the way YouTube servers works is that it serves the YouTube video and the YouTube ad from the same IP address. So if Pi-hole tries to block the same IP address for the ad, it will also block the video, which we don't want. So my workaround for this is to use YouTube Vance. YouTube Vance is pretty much like YouTube Premium, but for free. Their website is vancedapp.com. I'll have a link for this down below. So the first thing you need to do is click Download Advanced Manager. After that, click OK to keep it and open. Then click Install. Once that's done installing, just click Open and you should get a Welcome to Vance Manager screen. Now, it gives you the option to install YouTube Music and YouTube Vance, which is like the premium version of each of these apps. But right now, I will only be installing YouTube Vance, since YouTube Music is not necessary. Then just click Next at the bottom. Then it will ask you if your device is rooted. Your device is most likely non-root, so just click the blue button. Then first click Vanced Micro G. What this does is it will allow you to log into your Google account and get your recommendations in the Vanced app. Without this, you won't be able to log in. So then click Install. Then click Install on YouTube Vanced. You can choose your theme, your version, and your language. Once you're done with that, just click Install. If you get an update button next to YouTube Vance, I recommend you go ahead and click it and reinstall it. And once that's done, you can go ahead and find YouTube Vance in your apps list. Go ahead and click open and you will find everything there. If you click on a video, no ads will play at all. And Pi-hole doesn't block ads in the browser either. So if I go to YouTube, what I use is Adblock for YouTube. You can find them on the Chrome Web Store. Here, search for YouTube Adblock. And this is the one I use, Adblock for YouTube. This one, you can just click Add to Chrome here, and you won't have any ads when you play a video.